So it's our father and son um, vlog and normally we'd be doing this for Britain's Got Talent and we will be reviewing Britain's Got Talent for Reality Bite. Mm. Um, we've already done a couple of pre-vlogs, if that's a thing, I'm not sure whether it is. Um, <laughs> with done Sasha. some vloggers. We have with Sasha um, from Flashdance uh, and she was on Britain's Got Talent of course mm -hmm. and Nicole and Annie from Hollyoaks, yeah. complete nutters. Um, but we're going to do a serious one today because uh, there's been quite an important interview that happened this week. Mm -hmm. um, Simon Thomas, who some of you will know as a, a former Blue Peter presenter, but now he's a Sky Sports presenter, lost his wife um, and the mother of his son, who is eight years old, um, to cancer very suddenly last year. Um, he went on to This Morning and spoke to Holly and Phil. Um, that's Holly Willoughby and, and <laughs> Philip Schofield. Very, very, very emotional interview, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was. And, and he spoke to them about the loss of his wife and, and how he um, told his son, Ethan. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember this. Now, uh, people who know our, us, know our story, will know I lost my mum when I was 14 months old um, in a car accident. It was very sudden. Um, but I don't remember certain parts of it. But we'll go back to... I don't remember you ever telling me because it was must have been a given. What can you remember telling me? Yes, I did. I remember telling you. I remember we sat down together and you were on my knee. Bear in mind you couldn't speak and I think you'd only just started standing then. So you weren't really walking. You you didn't talk. You couldn't comprehend. And we just had a, a little chat. I took you outside and and. Uh, I, I showed you the sky and I just said mummy was up there and, and she'd gone to sleep and and we'd have to find our own um, path from there on. Uh, um, that's my recollection of it. Uh, it was a very uh, traumatic time for me. Uh, uh, you didn't have little or no understanding mm. then, but you had then to face your future life without uh, a mum. Yeah, I think it's happened in stages for me that obviously this whole thing is about grief and sharing grief. Um, and Simon was very um, outspoken in, in the fact of sharing grief is, is a way of getting mm. through things. And we're, our, our point of view is that men don't share grief enough. Um, you know, and, and I think... I have got a point to make on that, but I'll let you go on. Well, no, that's, yeah, that's I mean, only just happened now. Yeah, well... I only saw it last night. You, you, you can. It's very you, early in the morning, so <laughs> this <laughs> matching set of Delsa luggage is not really the Makeup was rubbish as well. Um, yeah, I, I noticed, I think, with women, they have their own support network, so everybody gangs together and it's, oh, gosh, yeah, I've lost my husband and that's it, they, they get the support. Men don't ask for help because we're independent so and so's and we have to carry on. But I noticed something um, that I did um, and I noticed it on Simon's uh, Twitter page that it becomes, I think for a man, it becomes your identity. Mm. And he's put Sky Reporter, blah, 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 widower. Yeah. And women don't do that. Women don't say, I, I'm a widow. They say, I've lost my husband. Men, bec it becomes an identity for them. And I only realised that, that that's exactly what I did. And that's going to lead on to what, what James is going to talk about in a minute. And, and I'll um, reiterate as well that that identity then creates you as a different person for your family and friends um, ha on how they deal with you and that incident of grief that you're then coping with. Yeah, We're, we'll come back to that in a second. I, and, I, and I totally agree. There are a lot of people... Um, there was a, a widower, the widower's blog... Um, is was became huge a couple of years mm. ago and ben who writes that he you know he has tagged himself as, mm -hmm. and his identity is widower and i think it, it maybe that is about grieving in public um and maybe that is a a way mm. of of dealing with it but i think i, I don't well, know maybe i, I think no i think well yes i agree i think it's how men create 
at their grief and dealing with the situation because men won't keep going around and saying, oh, I've lost my wife and that. Women will. That's not in a whinging way. It's just that that's their support network. Men haven't got that. So they, I wouldn't go to another man and say, oh, okay, we're going for a pint tonight. I've lost my wife. Whereas women will say, yeah, let's all go shopping because she's lost her husband or whatever. I suddenly become a widower. Mm. Simon has become a widower. Yeah. The book's identity is the widower mm -hmm. so that is how we deal with it. it it sort of encompasses what's happened to us and then it gives an expectation i think for other people to say oh, he's a widower yeah. and that's how we deal with it as individuals and that's how the rest of community and society deals with it yeah i think obviously i respond to grief and um, and that side of it in a different way because i never knew the person who i'm grieving for and I've always struggled with that. Um, and it's something that, I, that we found quite a few people who've dealt with that in the same mm -hmm. way and have been in the same situation mm -hmm. children-wise. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so interesting to hear other people's stories. And I think that's what Simon's done in a great way is put his story out there so that other people can relate to it. Mm -hmm. a, a, the story of grieving for someone who you have lost, who you don't know, hasn't been put out there and I'd love to do more on that but we'll, mm. well, that, that's that maybe is, is a different story maybe um, there's a book coming <laughs> there is maybe there is a book um, Simon also talked about the, the way people um, in his own kind of street and his own community mm. uh, almost ignored him because mm. they didn't know what to say or, or th there was just a change I know you've talked about that mm. before people crossing the street or whatever. He talked specifically about mm. uh, a woman on his estate who, who just looked at the floor when he turned around to say something because they didn't know what to do. Uh, how did you deal with that? Because that must have been... Mm. Well, again, I didn't deal with it because I didn't understand it at the time. And bear in mind, you've got to, you've got to appreciate that Simon uh, and anybody else who's lost their wife in a male uh, response won't understand that they're dealing with their own grief at that point in time i think what i would say is that i had very very close friends that i saw cross the street and 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 avoided talking to me and i know and i'll i'll guarantee simon's doing the same he is because he's do he's a broadcaster and he's on television talking about his wife and i probably never ever shut up about jennifer but then I got reluctant to talk about her and then I got very resilient about that because why she existed, I had proof. Um, why shouldn't I talk about her and why should I not have been afraid to talk about her? And I think that is the, the, uh, a man thing. Whereas if you see a group of women or if you see a woman walking down the street, this is gonna be very northern now, but the women would go, oh, there's John. E love, how are you? You lost your husband men will other people will not go to a man and say oh graham you lost jenny how how are you doing they avoid you mm. and it was like suddenly getting some kind of fatal illness that was contagious and and people wouldn't have eye contact with me they crossed the road friends avoided the phone didn't ring my support was there when i asked for it i never asked for it because i'm a man and that's the scenario, that's yeah. the vicious circle that you're in. Yeah, and on the flip side of that, when I was growing up, lots of people were talking to me about, about my mum, which at times was great, but other times it was heartbreaking because I was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about, really. I just, I've got this image of this person who, who I don't know. But that, again, is it, it is good to, to talk about that, and I'm glad that that was never... It was never like, no, don't talk about her, don't talk about her, because I'm glad that that was open forum, really. Um, we'll wrap this up quite quickly. How yes. important mm -hmm. do you think it is to publicly um, discuss mm. grief? I think, uh, I, I think it's as important as it is for the individual. I think grief's a very personalised thing, and I would never, ever tell anybody uh, how to grieve and I'd certainly never say to anybody I, I understand what you're going through because I've no idea nobody has any idea how an individual's um, coping with it I think it's great that people um, like ourselves like Simon who who are somewhat in the public eye can go out and say it's okay Rio, Rio Ferdinand did it as yeah. well you know it's okay to cry it's okay to grieve as a man you've got to get through that uh, and I think like anybody who who has died i think we've you've got to turn it around and you've got to make 
the grief, a celebration of that person's life. And that's what we've tried to do with the, the Jennifer Charity, which supports widowed um, men and their children. Right, well, that's it really. We're going to wrap up. Um, it's a very important message. Um, do get in touch with us if you're going through um, anything that you're going through. We have our own charity, the Jennifer Charity, that supports widowed fathers and their children. And we'll be vlogging again next week mm. when we might have a very special guest. But it'll be back to a Good. bit more humour. Who? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you next week. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye.